Hello, readers. Welcome to Book Buzz. Uh, we're excited to share some of our favorite recently published books, as well as some that have yet to be released. Uh, my name is Betty McDowell. I'm one of the adult services librarians here at Pflugerville Public Library, and I'm here with Shermaine Burleson and Meg Miller. Uh, just a note about some of these books. Uh, we've had to rework this presentation a little bit over the past month or so uh, because publishers keep changing their release dates, hoping that if they push the release dates back, they'll get more sales. So. Some of the release dates you see here may change again, so just be aware of that. Um, we've also asked these books be purchased as eBooks. So if you've got your library card, check out Overdrive. And if you have any questions about any of the books that we mentioned, uh, please let us know. And with that, I will hand it off to Shermaine, who will be covering adult fiction, and I'll be back with nonfiction later. And Meg will be covering graphic novels. Okay, my name is Shermaine, and I um, do adult fiction. And so about a couple of books. So the first one, it came out in March, and this one is about a German woman who is trying to recover from World War II, and she meets and marries this older man, and he becomes a part of the secret police in East Germany. And then, if that wasn't enough just surviving World War II, she falls in love with the man and her husband finds out about it because he's like a resistance fighter type um, guy and so he gives her the choice of leaving forever or going to prison like thanks for that but she decides to leave and 10 years later she's a photographer in Chicago and she never stops thinking about the daughter that her and Warner had and so she decides to go back home and get her daughter and find out what happened to her former lover. So there's all these things going on. There's little spy espionage things going on, but it's more of a love story than a mystery. So if you like historical fiction, um, Once Upon a Sunset by Tiff Marcello is absolutely awesome. So about a woman named Dana who is an OBGYN at this big hospital in Washington, D.C. And she makes a decision to um, patient that isn't a VIP patient. She takes care of them and the hospital has a problem with it. And there's this whole media storm and she has to go on sabbatical because they have to decide whether they're going to fire her or not. And on top of that, her ex-boyfriend who she just broke up with the hospital with her and then her mom is moving in with her after her grandmother died so all these big things are happening and they're going through their uh, things which her mother moved some of her mother's things into the house and in the box that they're looking through they find some letters from her grandfather that was supposed to have died in world war ii and it turns out he didn't and he's been in the philippines this whole time so she wants to go to the Philippines and find out more about who she is because her father died when she was like five and her mom was like, absolutely not. I don't know those people. If my dad died, I did, like, ugh, I don't know about this. And she decides to go and she finds love and family and all these different things. So she finds out like who she is and few people get to do that, but she does. And this came out March so we already have a physical copy of that, but we do have the version of that as well. The Codes of Love is, um, that came out March 5th is about a couple who decides to become a thruple. And what happens is, is that they have all these rules for their marriage already, and then they're going to add a third person with all of their rules and um, more than chaos ensues, but not murder exactly um so it's interesting and this is still a love story um per se but it's about uh what can happen when you give in to your desires of course it makes it sound all like smoky and like uh 50 shades of gray but it's a little bit more than that um and just remember the word throw just in case but this came out march 5th and this is another good read um in five years so this book has made um the bestsellers list already and this came out march 10th and this was also on good morning america and um i believe marie claire and some other people have um talked to this up so this is about a woman who fast forwards in time five years 
and what do you see yourself, where do you see yourself in five years, excuse me. And so she basically lands her dream job and her boyfriend proposes and she goes to sleep and her five year plan is going. And then all of a sudden she fast forwards to December 15th, 2025. And she's a man with a bed who is not her boyfriend and a ring on her finger that is not the ring her fiance gave her in 2020. And so then after an hour of like, what the heck is going on? She goes to sleep again and she's back in 2020. And she was like, I don't believe in time travel. I don't know what happened. That was interesting dream until four and a half years later, her friend introduces her to the guy she's dating. And it's the guy that she was in the bed with. And that one freaky hour that transported her back to 20. 25. So this is a love story about loyalty and friendship and destiny. And if you make a plan, can you actually, actually like depart from it or those types of things? So that's what that's about. Darling Rose Gold, this is one of my absolute favorites and I have another one, but this is, um, if you ever heard about the true uh, crime story of Gypsy Rosalie, so this is another version of that. And so basically, um, who names her daughter Rose Gold, but it's kind of cool, but yeah, so yes. So the mother named her daughter Rose Gold and for the first 18 years of her life, she thought she was sick and she was in a wheelchair and there were all these fundraisers for her and no matter how many doctors and tests and all, they never could find anything wrong, but she was so sick. And it turns out that her mother, Patty, has Munchausen by proxy. So she's really good at lying. Um, and after serving five years in prison, Patty has nowhere to go. And so she's like, please take me in. I forgive you for, you know, believing the lies that they said about me and testifying against me. And so, Rose Gold was like, oh, sure, I forgive you. But yeah, she shouldn't have trusted her daughter. She's not the little meek lamb that she left five years ago. And so that revenge, if you could get revenge on the one person who you felt like took everything from you, would you? Um, and that was an interesting roller coaster of mother like daughter. And that's not even telling you exactly like, what happened? That's just the beginning. Um, the healing knife is about um, Rachel is this brilliant surgeon and she lost her daughter, um, not her daughter, excuse me, she lost her father when um, she was pretty young. And so she became a surgeon um, to save as many patients as she can. And she lost her father to heart failure. So she does all of these um, complicated surgeries, especially heart surgeries on patients. So then um, she meets uh, Eve and Craig, and Craig is 12 years old, and only the type of skill of surgery that she has could save him. But what happens is, is he dies, and his mother was reluctant for the surgery to happen. She doesn't trust doctors anyway. And in, in all of this happening, the mother decides that she wants a life for a life. So what do you do when your patient's parent becomes obsessed with you? And like punishment won't just do. She wants her dead because her son was the only thing that she had. So the healing knife is a, a, a nice little thriller and that came out March 20th. This came out April 14th and Robin Carr is really, really good at romance and all these different things. And so there are two sisters and they're 20 years apart and the younger sister took care of the parents as they were dying. And so the other sister is a successful lawyer because she was already pretty much adult when her sister was born. And everything is fine. Once the parents are gone, the younger sister is like, yeah, I'm gonna live my life. But now she doesn't know how because she's always taking care of people. And Justine has paid for everything and making sure everybody was okay. But now her marriage is falling apart and she's trying to save it. She's trying to save her career and they don't know how to start over, but then they realize that they can help each other. And that's where their happiness in the beginning of a new life starts and the courage to do that is what they find. This book is by the same woman, if you're familiar with The Secret Life of Bees, 
Um, she writes really compelling stories. This came out April 21st. So this is the book about a woman named Anna who lives in Galilee. And um, it's not exactly controversial, but this is about Anna who meets 18 year old Jesus and marries him. And she moves to Nazareth with him and his brothers and his mother. And all these things are going on because at this time, of course, um, in history, most of us know that like the Roman occupiers have come into Israel and they're trying to do all of these things. And this is, of course, before or, or during the events um, when Jesus is about to be crucified and her brother is Judas, of course. Um, she doesn't have enough problems with being a woman in the first century and married to a um, guy named Jesus. But that is exactly what happens. And so she gets herself into trouble by being a woman and being outspoken and those types of things. And she flees to Alexandria. So she goes to Egypt and she starts finding all of these things out and all these revelations and all these dangerous things started happening. And then all of these events are going to converge. So the author took very good care of looking at historical events and speculative fiction is a thing where you think about what could have happened or what if, and that's exactly what this book is about. So it's it's more about Anna than it is about Jesus necessarily, but those two things collide. And she's very good at telling stories, and this is another one of them. Hugh is a really good story. Um, so this is a story um, about um, basically a thing or it that comes into town and goes into a church it's uh, genderless uh racially ambiguous and doesn't speak at all and there's a forgiveness festival that's happening in this town and so all the people in town are taking turns like letting pew which is what they name it um come in and they're telling pew all their secrets and doing all these things and then all of a sudden people stop being very nice and all these things started happening up to the forgiveness festival and so all these secrets come out and is pew an angel or a devil or what is it why is it here and those are the things that the town is going to find out grown-ups is basically about what it says so uh jenny's life is falling apart her boyfriend just left her for somebody her friends uh group is like breaking up um, she has typical millennial problems of like trying to have it all and do it all and be it all. And then her mother has to move back in with her and she loses her job because she's not feminist enough. And she's like, what am I going to do? Like, how can I be an adult? Like, what is adulthood? So a lot of the book is in like social media messages and um, emails and texts and um, it's written that way about like her life. So it's not exactly Bridget Jones diary, but similar. And um, it's basically about will she grow up or won't she? Like, does she have what it takes to grow up or is it okay if she doesn't grow up? And that is coming out May 12th. Rodham, this is another book, uh, Curtis Sittenfield, which is her middle name. So this is um, a woman author um, who wrote Engaged, which is like another telling of Pride and Prejudice. So this is about another speculative fiction book about what would have happened to Hillary if she never married Bill Clinton. And their lives keep interacting and they keep meeting each other and all these things keep merging them together. But what happens if she decided to take a political career of her own without Bill? Like, what would her life be like? And, and it's mostly about really what most women um, having it all and maybe at the same time, maybe not, um, and what that looks like. So that's what that's about. And that comes out May 19th. The new girl is kind of like the devil wears Prada with a stalker involved instead of just like a personal assistant. And so this, uh, Margaret goes on uh, basically maternity leave and Maggie is like, okay, she's this freelance journalist and she's like, I'm gonna take over this fashion editor position and do all these things. But she starts finding out all these secrets about this woman is supposed to be like the it woman and perfect and all these different things. And Margaret is spiraling because new motherhood, she's suspicious, she's paranoid. And then somebody is blackmailing her and threatening her. And she's thinking, 
all these things like what's going to happen to her old life when she's ready to come back and what if Maggie doesn't want to give her job up so these two things are happening at the same time um crazy right um this is a mystery if you like mysteries about animals um this is a uh, long-standing series by Rita Mae Brown and uh the co-author is the cat Sneaky Pie Brown um it's very cute but this is about some um murder mystery solving women in a little town in Virginia and they're basically getting ready for this big event at St. Luke's Lutheran Church and uh two things happen so um one of the committee members on the gardening committee for the church gets robbed and another member like gets poisoned at a charity auction and so harry um has to find out who is doing all of these things and with the help of like her puppy and her kittens and all these and all of her friends she has to figure out um who's trying to kill um the garden club uh before they kill somebody again um if you're a fan of jessica flesher and murder she wrote um there is a series called murder she wrote of course um and uh jessica flesher is still writing and still doing all these things so you know the tv series is on the books kept going and so she's having work done on her house and she's staying at a hotel with this uh wedding party and so the wedding party is kind of like Romeo and Juliet, the families hate each other, but their kids are getting married, so they're like, whatever. But all of a sudden, um, during the rehearsal dinner, there's a big blizzard and they're all stuck. And then a murderer comes, of course, and decides that they're going to take the whole family down one by one. And so Jessica has to solve the murder. Happy Catastrophe is by Maddie Dawson. And this is about what happens when you have plans with your partner and those plans get interrupted. So basically, um, Mary, um, Marnie, excuse me, and Patrick want to be parents and they want to get married and they're on this track. And then Patrick finds out that he has an eight year old son he never knew anything about. And they have to navigate their relationship with this um, very big piece of the puzzle of their life together. And she's ready to do it, but Patrick is not so sure if their life together will look anything like they wanted to with addition. So this is another love story. This is coming out May 26th, and that's really good. Something to Talk About by Meryl Winsler is about um, a personal assistant and her boss who happens to be this famous actress. So as things happen they're on the carpet and they're talking to each other and the tabloids pick up on them laughing and how they're kind of vibing so then they decide oh they must be a couple so um they're basically trying to dodge paparazzi and trying to defuse the situation because um emma wants this big promotion and she wants to do all these things she wants to be more than just assistant and Joe is like trying to get her acting career going and all these things, but then they start to really like each other and they wonder if it's worth it to pursue this relationship that started out as a lot. Um, the Green Dress by Liz Tomasa. Um, so there's a series of True Colors, all these books about um, historical um, fiction of things that happen in romance. So basically this a woman comes to Boston and she's adopted by this family and then all the family members start dying and getting sick and in the past like in, it takes over a period of like four to five years and so how can all the families die of the same illness like what's happening so she meets a neighborhood doctor or i shouldn't say meet they knew each other and they're trying to figure out what happens and this is based on a um true case as well and so they're going to fall in love and stop people from dying, basically. But this came out June 1st, and there are more in the series um, of other books to come, but this is the latest one. Um, if I Were You is uh, coming out June 2nd, and this is uh, Christian fiction, but it's set in World War II. And so basically, long story short, two friends were um, in England, uh, one of the, their friends, but uh, one of the friends works for the other. And all of a sudden, um, after the war is over, one of the friends decides to come to America because she met this man 
um, they had a child. And so she goes to meet her in-laws and finds out her friend has been impersonating her this whole time. And so uh, it's pretty trippy ride, but like how you get past that challenging friendship and faith and how you overcome all these different things. So it's pretty crazy. But if you like historical fiction and those types of twists, it's a good one. Um, this one is um, An Elegant Woman, and it's based on the author's own history and four generations of women and the decisions that they make up into the 20th century. And so it's basically about how do you tell stories that you tell yourself and what parts do you leave out when you're telling your story to somebody else? Like, what do you forget? What do you remember? What do you want to forget? That's what this one is about. Um, the Paris Library is actually based on a World War II story about the American Library in Paris. And so this is about friendship and about saving books and people. And um, it's about a librarian who um, becomes a librarian in 1939. She studied really hard. And then when the war breaks out, um, her and other people in Paris are trying to save the books because the Nazis come in and they want to burn everything and they want to do all burn all the libraries down, steal all um, these paintings and all these different things. So when she, the war ends, she ends up moving to America and she's in Montana and she's uh, working in the library. Um, you know, by this time, like part time, and it's 1983, and she has a neighbor who's really nosy and really interested in her for some reason because she's French and all these different things and um so this is about them forming a friendship and just uh secrets and betrayal and um what happens when you take the courage to forgive and to be brave this one is a second one of my favorites because um this is coming out june 9th but i got an arc of this and this is set in austin so um being a texan Loved it, loved it, loved it. And so basically, um, Samaya so works at this uh, app company in Austin, and she works for this big tech company, and her boyfriend catfished her with these two other women, and they decide to form this, you know, like club of, you know, focusing on yourself and your dreams and all these things. And so just when she's like, no men for six months, a man comes into her life that works with her, and they're really attracted to each other and there's all these things and she's like hmm i don't know if i can go through that again because men kind of suck right now and she's also trying to get her app and can she have it all another one of those can she but can he be a real boyfriend is he too good to be true there is a huge twist uh, but it's really good hey charmaine yeah i'm gonna go after this one if that's okay <laughs> yes i know um this is uh one of my favorite ones this is in june 9th and, and the other list of books you can email me if you want to know some more of course um this is about the night of the living dead so it is about uh if you like zombies it's about that but it's about this group of people who have to come together to try to save the world and it doesn't end the way you think it will and that's uh it's about a virus actually that uh causes a lot of chaos yeah, that's it. I love that horse. I can't wait till we can have the little horses back at the light. Okay, so, all right, I've got mine split up. So I'll start with essays, one of my favorite things to read right now while my attention span is very low. So this one came out on March 17th. Uh, Bess Kelp, Emmy-nominated TV writer and New Yorker contributor, saved every voicemail her grandmother Bobby Bell ever left her. Bobby was a force, irrepressible, glamorous, unapologetically opinionated. Bobby doted on Bess, Bess adored Bobby. Then at 90, Bobby died, but in this debut memoir, Bobby is speaking to Bess once more in a voice as passionate as it ever was in life. With humor and poignancy, Bess Kelp gives us proof of the special bond that can skip a generation and endure beyond death. And if you like Jodi Picoult, she recommends this book. This I'm reading right now, and it is very, very funny. Um, and my daughter wanted me to read it to her because that's a really cute cover, but it is not a book for children. Um, Irby is 40 and increasingly uncomfortable in her own skin, despite what inspirational Instagram infographics have promised her. 
She's left her job as a receptionist, has published successful books, and has been friend zoned by Hollywood, left Chicago, and moved into a house with her wife. She goes on bad dates with new friends, spends weeks in Los Angeles taking meetings with TV executives slash amateur astrologers, while being a cheese fry eating, slightly damp Midwest person with neck pain and no cartilage in her knees. The essays in this collection draw on the raw, hilarious particulars of Irby's new life. Wow, no thank you is Irby at her most unflinching, riotous, and relatable. All right, this is a bit of an older one, but I included it because people are loving it. It is from the creator of L's Eric Reads the News, a heartfelt and hilarious memoir and essays about growing up, seeing the world differently, finding unexpected hope, and experiencing every awkward, extraordinary stumble along the way. And it comes recommended from Lin-Manuel Miranda, if you are a, uh, a fan of his. Meet the woman behind the books. New York Times bestselling author Laura Lippman offers her take on a woman's life across the decades. Her childhood and school years, her newspaper career, her experiences as a novelist, Lippman finds universal touchstones in an unusual life that has many, as many twists and turns as her award-winning crime fiction. Officer Clemens of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood fame. When he created the role of Officer Clemens on the award-winning television series, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Dr. Francois Clemens made history as the first African-American actor to have a recurring role on a children's program. A new wide world opened up for Clemens, but one that also required him to make painful personal choices and sacrifices. Beginning with his early years in Alabama and Ohio, marked by family trauma and loss through his studies as a music major at Oberlin College, where Clemens began to investigate and embrace his homosexuality to a chance encounter with Fred Rogers that changed the whole course of both men's lives. Officer Clemens chronicled the historical and enlightening life and career of a man who has brought joy to millions of adults and children across generations and borders. Me and Patsy kicking up dust. My friendship with Patsy Klein. Full of laughter and tears, this eye-opening, heartwarming memoir paints a picture of two stubborn, spirited country gals who would be damned if they'd let men in convention tell them how to be. Set in the heady streets of the 1960s South, this nostalgia ride shows how Nashville blossomed into the city of music it is today. Tender and fierce, me and Patsy kicking up dust is an up-close and personal portrait of a friendship that defined a generation and changed country music indelibly, and a meditation on love, loss, and legacy. Hollywood Park, a memoir by Mikhail Jolet. Mikhail Jolet's story opens up in an experimental commune in California, which later morphed into the Church of Synanon, one of the country's most infamous and dangerous cults, where the leaders mandate all children were separated from their parents when they were six months old and handed over to the cult school. After spending years in what was essentially an orphanage, Mikhail escaped the cult one morning with his mother and older brother. But in many ways, life outside Synanon was even harder and more erratic. Although Mikkel's Jolais story is filled with heartbreak, it is ultimately an unforgettable portrayal of love at its fiercest and most loyal. All right, Collections of My Non-Existence by Rebecca Solnit. Rebecca Solnit describes her formation as a writer and as a feminist in 1980s San Francisco. Looking back, she describes how she came to recognize that her own experiences of harassment and menace were inseparable from the systemic problem of who has a voice, or rather who is heard and respected and who is silenced and how she was galvanized to use her own voice for change. Hidden Valley Road by Robert Culper. And this is a, an Oprah's book club pick. This is another one a lot of people are raving about. Don and Mimi Galvin seem to be living the American dream, but behind the scenes was a different story. Psychological breakdown, sudden shocking violence, hidden abuse, by the mid-1970s, six of the 10 Galvin boys were diagnosed as schizophrenic. How could all this happen to one family? What took place inside the house on Hidden Valley Road was so extraordinary that the Galvins became one of the first families to be studied by the National Institute of Mental Health. Their story offers a shadow of history, a shadow history of the science of schizophrenia. And unbeknownst to the family, samples of their DNA inform decades of genetic research that continues today. With clarity and compassion, best-selling and award-winning author Robert Coker uncovers one family's unforgettable legacy of suffering, love, and hope. Oh, this one's going to be a tearjerker. Um, on March 3rd, 2017, children's author and filmmaker Amy Cross Rosenthal penned an op-ed for the New York Times. It was titled, You May Want to Marry My Husband. It appeared 10 days before 
from ovarian cancer. A heartbreaking, wry, brutally honest, and creative play on a personal ad in which a dying wife encouraged her husband to go on and find happiness after her demise. The column quickly went viral, reaching more than 5 million people worldwide. In this book, Jason describes what came next. His commitment to respecting Amy's wish, even as he struggled with her loss, surveying his life before, with, and after Amy, Jason ruminates on love, the pain of watching a loved one suffer, and what it means to heal. How he and their three children, despite their profound sorrow, went on. Jason's emotional journey offers insights on dying and death and the excruciating pain of losing a soulmate and illuminates the lessons he learned. All right, I have a few cookbooks for Downton Abbey fans. This elegant cookbook captures um, the essence of tea time at Downton Abbey with classic recipes for sweets and savories, etiquette notes, tea service know-how and lavish imagery to create, recreate this British tradition. Gorgeous food photographs, lifestyle stills from the show and recent movie and character quotes bring the characters of Downton Abbey and this rich tradition to life in the official Downton Abbey afternoon tea cookbook. Chocolate is Forever by Maida Hayter. Throughout Maida's nearly 50 year career as the genius of baking, one thing was constant, her passion for chocolate. Now Chocolate is Forever collects her very best most irresistibly chocolatey delights. Each of these nearly 100 recipes is written with made as warm but no nonsense instructions and carries her guarantee that it will work perfectly every time. A must have in every chocolate lover's kitchen. Tasty Pride, recipes and stories from the queer food community by Tasty and Jesse Susick. Be loud, be proud, be flavorful. From the beloved fiercely inclusive Buzzfeed cooking brand comes 75 innovative, delicious and meaningful recipes inspiring stories from prominent LGBTQ plus cooks and foodies, including Ted Allen, Anita Lowe, and Rick Martinez. Pull up a chair and take your seat at the table with tasty pride. True crime. So this was recently released, released The Kidnap Years, the astonishing true history of the forgotten kidnapping epidemic that shook depression era America by David Stout. The Great Depression was a time of desperation in America, adding to the lawlessness of the decade Thugs and corrupt law enforcement officers ran rampant. But amidst this panic, there was one surefire way to make money, one used by criminals and resourceful civilians alike, kidnapping. Jump into this forgotten history with Edgar Award-winning author David Stout as he explores the reports of missing people that inundated newspapers at the time. Learn the horrifying details of these abduction cases from the methods used in the investigative processes to the personal histories of the culprits and victims. All of this culminates with the most infamous kidnapping in American history, the one that targeted an international celebrity and changed life forever, the Lindbergh kidnapping, a fascinating crime book like no other. This book was set to be released in May. They've moved it back to July, um, but I left it in anyway because it sounds interesting. The King of Confidence, a tale of utopian dreamers, frontier schemers, true believers, false prophets, and the murder of a, an American monarch by Miles Harvey. In the summer of 1843, James Strang, a charismatic young lawyer and avowed atheist, vanished from a rural town in New York. Months later, he reappeared on the Midwestern frontier and converted to a burgeoning religious movement known as Mormonism. In the wake of the murder of the sex leader, Joseph Smith, Strang unveiled a letter purportedly from the prophet, naming him successor, successor and persuaded hundreds of fellow converts to follow him to an island in Lake Michigan, where he declared himself a divine king. From this stronghold, he controlled a fourth of the state of Michigan, established a pirate colony where he practiced plural marriage and perpetrated thefts, corruption, and frauds of all kinds. Centering his narrative on this charlatan's tur turbulent 12 years in power, Miles Harvey gets to the root of a timeless American original, The Confidence Man. This is another one who, um, where the release date was moved back to July. Uh, Deep Delta Justice, a black teen, his lawyer, and their groundbreaking breaking battle for civil rights in the South. In 1966, in a small town in Louisiana, a 19-year-old black man named Gary Duncan pulled his car off the road to stop a fight between a group of four white kids and two of Gary's own cousins. After putting his hand on the arm of one of the white children, Duncan was arrested for assault. A member of the local branch of the NAACP, Duncan used his contacts to reach Richard Sobel, a 29-year-old born and bred New Yorker working that summer in a black firm in New Orleans to represent him. In this powerful work of character-driven history that benefits from the author's deep understanding of the law, 
Van Meter brings alive how one court case changed the course of justice in the South and eventually the entire country. The events that Gary Duncan set in motion brought to an end a form of injustice, denial of trial by jury, that led to the incarceration of thousands of poor and mostly black Americans. Duncan versus Louisiana changed America, but before it did, it changed the lives of people who litigated it. The Lincoln Conspiracy, the secret plot to kill America's 16th president and why it failed by Brad Meltzer and John Minch. Everyone knows the story of Abraham Lincoln's assassination in 1865. If you were aware of the original conspiracy to kill him four years earlier in 1861, while he was on his way to Washington, DC, for his first inauguration. The conspirators were part of a pro-Southern secret society that didn't want an anti-slavery president in the White House. The best-selling authors of The First Conspiracy, which covers the secret plot against George Washington, now turn their attention to a little-known but true story about this failed assassination attempt on President Lincoln. Galileo and the Science Deniers by Mario Livio. Astrophysicist and best-selling author Mario Livio draws on his own scientific expertise to provide captivating insights into how Galileo, one of the most significant figures behind the scientific revolution, reached his bold new conclusions about the cosmos and the laws of nature. Galileo was put on trial with his life in the balance for refusing to renounce his scientific convictions. He remains a hero and an inspiration to scientists and all of those who respect science, which, as Livio reminds us in this gripping book, remains threatened even today. Navigate Your Stars by Jesmyn Ward. Beautifully illustrated in full color by Gina Triplett, this gorgeous and profound book will charm a generation of students and their parents. Ward's imitable voice shines through as she shares her experience as a Southern Black woman and addresses the themes of grit, adversity, and the importance of family bonds. Navigate Your Stars is a perfect gift for anyone in need of inspiration from the New York Times bestselling and two-time National Book Award winning author of Salvage the Bones, We Reaped, and Sing Unburied Sing. All right, experimenting with kids, 50 amazing science projects you can perform on your child ages two to five by Sean Gallagher. Recreate landmark studies and child development in your own home and watch your little one achieve developmental milestones in real time with this fascinating hands-on guide. Whether your child is just beginning to speak in sentences or is on their way to kindergarten, these easy and surprising projects will help you to see the world through your child's eyes and also to give you the tools to help them master new skills as they grow. And then they stopped talking to me by Judith Warner. The French have a name for the uniquely hellish years between elementary school and high school, or the ungrateful age. Characterized by a perfect storm of developmental changes, the middle school years are a time of great distress for children and parents alike. Part cultural critique and part call to action, this essential book unpacks one of life's most formative periods and shows how we can help our children not only survive, but thrive. Active Measures, The Secret History of Disinformation and Political Warfare by Thomas Ridd. We live in the age of disinformation, of organized deception. Spy agencies pour vast resources into hacking, leaking, and forging data, often with the goal of weakening the very foundation of liberal democracy, trust in facts. Thomas Ridd, a renowned expert on technology and national security, was one of the first to sound the alarm. Active Measures takes the reader on a guided tour deep into a vast hall of mirrors, old and new, pointing to a future of engineered polarization, more active and less measured, but also offering the tools to cut through the deception. The Lost Family, How DNA Testing is Upending Who We Are by Libby Copeland. In The Lost Family, journalist Libby Copeland investigates what happens when we embark on a vast social experiment with understanding of the ramifications. Copeland explores the culture of genealogy buffs, the science of DNA, in the business of companies like Ancestry and 23andMe, all while tracing the story of one woman, her unusual results, and a relentless methodical drive for answers that becomes a thoroughly modern genetic detective story. Gripping and masterfully told, The Lost Family is a spectacular book on a big, timely subject. 24 Life Stories and Legends from the Say Hey Kid by Willie Mays and John Shea. Widely regarded as the greatest all-around player in baseball history because of his unparalleled hitting, defense, and base running, the beloved Willie Mays offers people of all ages his lifetime of experience meeting challenges with positivity, integrity, and triumph. Presented in 24 chapters to correspond with his universally recognized uniform number, Willie's memoir provides more than the story of his role in his America's pastime. 
This is a story of a man who values family and community, engages in charitable causes, especially involving children, and follows a philosophy that encourages hope, hard work, and the fulfillment of dreams. Last one. Yogi, uh, Life Behind a Mask by John Pessaw. Drawing on more than 100 interviews and four years of reporting, John Pessaw delivers a transformational portrait of how Barra handed, handled his hard-earned success on and off the playing field, as well as his failures, and how Barra's humility and grace redefined what it truly meant to be a star. The definitive biography of Yogi Berra, the New York Yankees icon and winner of 10 World Series championships. And before I hand it over to Meg, I'm sending you the slideshow, but um, I've also got 12 more books in here that I did not have time to stick in. So you can check those out as well. So um, 24 titles to tell you about tonight. Some we've already ordered, some we've got to look forward to, and some that are available now digitally on Hoopla or Overdrive. You'll see the Hoopla or Overdrive logo on my slides if the title is already available. Um, in this first section, I have titles that were part of the order placed just before all this happened. Pretty Deadly, distributed by Image Comics, is a creator-owned American comic book series by Kelly Sue DeConnick and Spanish artist Emma Rios. The story combines elements from Western horror genres and draws on aspects from mythology and folklore. Volume 3, The Rat, takes us diving beneath the sun strip of 1930s Hollywood land, where the best and brightest are dimmed and broken. The granddaughter of Sarah Fields is found dead. Desperate to solve her murder and versed in the ways of the immortals, her heartbroken uncle calls on the reaper of vengeance to aid him. In his obsession, following this twisted path may lead to his undoing. Plunge back into the Eister nominated New York Times bestselling world of Pretty Deadly with the Rat. Uh, now we have the start of some new series Family Tree Volume 1 Sapling. Um, from a name you'll hear more than once in this list of mine, Jeff Lamar and Phil Hester, also from Image Comics. This new genre defying series combines mystery, action, and Cronenbergian body horror into an epic story about the lengths a mother will go to to keep her children safe in the face of increasingly unstable world and unspeakable horrors. Touted as pre apocalyptical, when an eight year old girl literally begins to transform into a tree, her single mom, troubled brother, and possibly insane grandfather embark on a bizarre and heart-wrenching odyssey across the back roads of America, desperately searching for a way to cure her horrifying transformation before it's too late. But the further they get from home and the closer the girl gets to completely losing her humanity, the more external forces threaten to tear the family apart as fanatical cults, mercenaries, and tabloid paparazzi close in, determined to destroy the girl or use, for, use her for themselves. Uh, Once in Future Volume 1 is one I'll actually be on reserve for. I flew an advanced reader copy and I'm looking forward to reading the hard copy of this from Boom Studios. A reviewer calls it a fantastically fun fish out of water adventure story. The King is undead, long live the King, when a group of nationalists use an ancient artifact to bring a villain from Arthurian myth back from the dead to gain power, ex-monster hunter Bridget McGuire escapes her retirement home and pulls her unsuspecting grandson Duncan, a museum curator, into a world of magic and mysticism to defeat a legendary threat. Best-selling writer Kieran Gillen and Russ Manning, award-winning artist Dan Mora, explore the mysteries of the past, the complicated truths of our history, and the power of family to save the day, especially if that family has secret bunkers of ancient weapons and decades of experience hunting the greatest monsters in Britain's history. Uh, this is a book that has gotten a lot of press. Second Coming Volume 1 by award-winning writer Mark Russell and artist Richard Pace centers around the return to Earth of Jesus Christ who is appalled to discover what humanity has taken from his teachings. With both mankind and his own father seemingly preferring the morality of a popular superhero, God commands Earth's mightiest superhero, Sunstar, to accept Jesus as his roommate and teach him how to use power more forcefully. Jesus, shocked at the way humans have twisted his message over two millennia, vows to straighten them out. Russell said in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, for better or worse, this is my blasphemy. By no means am I suggesting mine is the only possible interpretation or even the best, just that when I consider what is important and unique about the life and words of Christ, the things that come to my mind are his empathy and forgiveness, his refusal to play any of the reindeer games of the rich and powerful. And here we have Die Hard at a Wedding with Going to the Chapel by David Popose from Action Lab Danger Zone. 
Uh, collecting the hit miniseries, we follow Emily, a conflicted bride whose wedding is crashed by the bank robbing bad Elvis guy. But when the heist goes south and police surround the chapel, Emily must become the ringleader of her own hostage situation to escape walking down the aisle. That is, assuming her unsuspecting fiance doesn't rescue her first. Forget what you think you know about rom-coms because you've just been invited to the heist of the century. If you like The Fix, Assassination Nation, Crowded or Sex Criminals, you're going to fall in love with going to the chapel. Uh, that can be arranged by Huda Fahmi from Anders McMill Publishing. Chaperones, suitors, and arranged marriages aren't only reserved for the heroines of a Jane Austen novel. They're just another walk in the park for this leading lady who is on a mission to find her leading lad. From the brilliant comics, Yes, I'm Hot in This, Fahmi tells the hilarious story of how she met and married her husband, navigating mismatched suitors, gossiping aunties, and societal expectations for Muslim women. That can be arranged deftly and hilariously reveals to readers what it can be like to find a husband as an observant Muslim woman in the 21st century. So relevant in today's evolving cultural climate, Fahmi's story offers a perceptive and personal glimpse into the sometimes sticky, but ultimately rewarding balance of independent choice and tradition. Uh, my next title features a possibly familiar character, Punisher Kill Crew by Jerry Duggan and Juan Ferreira. The war of the realms may be over, but for the Punisher, the conflict never ends. To combat Malachis' invasion, Frank Castle raised his own personal army. And now, in the war's aftermath, Punisher's crew has some scores to settle. The Punisher has stolen Thor's flying goat and is traversing the Ten Realms on a mission. But his first stop is Counter Earth. He made a promise of vengeance, and Frank keeps his promises. But a van full of orphans is about to make that vow a lot more complicated. And while Frank has picked up some unlikely allies for his kill crew, can he keep them alive? It's an action epic unlike anything you've ever seen from the Punisher before. One team, 10 realms, all out war. A Monkeys Flying Robot reviewer Manuel Gomez says Jerry Duggan is quickly becoming one of the most fun writers to read in comics. Punisher Kill Crew is a prime example. It's a light on, lighter take on the Punisher, sure, but it's not out of character. Castle is still a killer. He just happens to be killing trolls and tree gods instead of criminals. Oh, and at one point he wears a horned helmet. And did I mention the magic goat? And that's the thing, plot is so nuts you can't help but embrace it. Things like that are one of the reasons War of the Realms is such a great crossover. Doctor Strange shows up, which is always welcome. Duggan also adds a man seeking vengeance and a group of war orphans. Great concept, War of the Realm orphans, to add some weight to the story. But the overall tone here is more light and fun, and that's what makes the book unique. Our next section is continuing series. Um, you won't see the Hoopla or Overdrive logo in these, but all of them actually have their earlier volumes leading up to these available on Hoopla, so you can read what comes before. We start this section with an image comic series, East of West, Volume 10, by Jonathan Hickman and Nick Dragata. It's the final collection of the epic sci-fi Western. Uh, the series is a science fiction Western set in a dystopian America and cast the four horsemen of the apocalypse as heroes. If you aren't already familiar with this series, in this timeline, the Civil War never ended, and there was an extended war between the Union, the Confederacy, an African American Kingdom, a Native American Confederacy, Chinese exiles, and Texan separatists. New readers will be able to binge the whole series without having to wait. Fans of the short lived show and previous volumes will get more youthful assassins in Deadly Class Volume 9. Reminisce about the mid 1980s underground through the eyes of the most damaged, dangerous teenagers on Earth. The sophomore exam draws near as another year comes to a close in Rick Remender and Wes Craig's smash hit series. This image title comic is also already on the order. Um, it's 1987. Marcus Lopez hates school. Welcome to the most brutal high school on Earth, where the world's top crime families send the next generation of assassins to be trained. Murder is an art. Killing is a craft. At King's Dominion High School for the Deadly Arts, the dagger in your back isn't always metaphorical, nor is your fellow classmates poison. I said you'd see Lamira again. Here we have Images Gideon Falls Volume 4, The Pentaculous. Uh, this was the 2019 Eisner Award winner for Best New Series. This smash hit horror series continues after the time and space shifting journey of the last arc. Norton and Clara are trapped in small town Gideon Falls with a murderous psychopath. Meanwhile, Angie and Father Fred confront the bishop in big city Gideon Falls. 
where the secrets of the Pentaculus machine are revealed in all their mind twisting glory. When the plowmen finally answer the call of duty. Now the third volume of the Justice League. Dark Arc Witching War by James Tynan IV and Alvaro Martinez Bueno from DC Comics, of course. The rules of magic have changed forever, and the Justice League Dark is ready to keep the peace in the magical world. But that peace will be shattered as Cersei steps to center stage, gathering a team of magic's most dangerous monsters to take control of magic once and for all. The Floronic Man, Papa Midnight, Clarion the Witch Boys, and Grundy, Cersei has gathered her in Justice League Dark for a reason, and it's going to tear the world of magic apart. Just as Wonder Woman thought the realms of magic were back under control, a new witching war brought on by this unstoppable group of villains threatens to destroy everything. Can she find out what Cersei is after and stop her before it's too late? Here we go. Oh, one too many. You don't want to miss this. The biggest fashion disaster in comics is back. It's not girl. Volume three is this real life by Brian Lee O'Malley and Leslie Hung, also published in Image Comics. Fashion blogger Lottie Person just wants to live her flawless online persona. But why is real life so much harder? Comic Book Resource says it explores both what it's like for those with anxiety as well as the pressure we all put on ourselves in a refreshing and introspective way all while delivering one hell of a story. Now we have it. One night, one city, three women. November volume two. A phone call for help makes hell break loose for three strangers connected by a bad luck, a twist of fate, and a gun in a puddle of rain. In the middle of a dense criminal underworld, these strangers' lives collide on one fateful and bloody night in this epic novelistic thriller by Matt Fraction and Elsa Chartier with colors by Matt Hollingsworth. November follows the lives of three women intersecting in a dark criminal underground as fire and violence tears through their city on a single day and night. They discover their lives are bound together by a mysterious man that seems to be the cause of it all. All right, my section highlights new titles, starting with DC Comics and powerhouse creative team Scott Snyder at Greg Capullo concluding a decade long partnership with the Cape Crusader in Batman Last Night on Earth. 20 years in the future, Bruce Wayne wakes up in Arkham Asylum, young, sane, and he's never been Batman. To piece together the mystery of his past, the Dark Knight embarks on a sprawling quest through this unknown world, meeting futuristic versions of former friends and enemies, including a grisly traveling companion, Joker's head. Somehow still alive, Joker's decapitated head becomes Batman's ghoulish guide through the landscape of the devastated DC universe. But to unravel the cause of this terrible future, he'll need to track down the unspeakable force that destroyed the world he once knew. This could be the last Batman story ever told. Probably not. Uh, what makes this next title new is the combined edition releasing next month from NBM Publishing. Um, it's actually currently available on Hoopla in a two volume set. Uh, John is the entrancing everyday working class the majestic background of the rising skyscrapers of New York. March 1932, New York. Dan Shackleton is an Irish migrant. Like many of his fellow countrymen, he has found work on the construction site of the Rockefeller Center. He is to replace Ryan Murphy, a worker who died on the site. Dan works with a quiet, broad-shouldered man named Giant, who is in charge of informing Ryan Murphy's family of the news. But G Giant decides not to say anything. Instead, he sends a substantial sum of money accompanied by an unsigned typewritten letter. When he receives a response from Ryan's widow, Marianne, Giant writes to her again, tangling himself up in a web of lies. Little by little, the enigmatic Giant starts to come out of his shell until one day when Marianne shows up in New York with her three children ready to join her husband. Uh, and another image title, Bog Bodies, has Declan Shalvey and Gavin Fullerton delivering a cold and poignant story of crime, survival, and regret. In, it is the story of an Irish gangster on the run after a job gone wrong, who stumbles upon a young woman lost in the Dublin mountains. Injured and unarmed, the unlikely pair must try to evade their pursuers and survive the desolate blog, bog that has served as burial ground for unspeakable murder throughout history. Uh, DC Comics and Dark Horse Comics present the ultimate superhero crossover event from 20.
2018, Black Hammer and Justice League, Hammer of Justice. Again by Jeff Lamar. A strange man arrives simultaneously on Black Hammer Farm and in Metropolis, and both worlds are warped as Starro attacks. Batman, Green Lantern, Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, and more cross over with Golden Gale, Colonel Weird, and the rest of the Black Hammer gang. Excited for this one. History buffs will enjoy the string bags by Garth Ennis and PJ Holden from a name not usually associated with comics, uh, the Naval Institute Press. Dead Reckoning here is their graphic novel imprint. Uh, if you do the incredible often enough, they'll want you to do the impossible. Based on the true story of the Royal Navy's Swordfish Cruise, this is an epic tale of young men facing death in an aircraft almost out of time. Nazi Germany, Imperial Japan, and Fascist Italy began World War II with torpedo bombers that could devastate enemy warships and merchantmen at will. British, Britain's Royal Navy squadrons went to war equipped with the fairy starfish, swordfish. A biplane torpedo bomber in an age of monoplanes, the swordfish was underpowered and undergunned, an obsolete museum piece, an embarrassment. Its crews fully expected to be shot from the skies, Instead, they flew the ancient string bag into legend. Writer Garth Ennis and artist PJ Holden present the story of the men who crewed the swordfish from their triumphs against the Italian fleet at Toronto and the mighty German battleship Bismarck in the Atlantic to the deadly challenge of the Channel Dash in the bleak winter's water of their homeland. They lived as they flew without a second to lose and the greatest tributes to their courage would come from the enemy who strove to kill them. Publishers Weekly says Ennis again achieves what his best World War II comics such as Johnny Red the Hurricane and Night Witches have done. Illuminate a little known corner of that sprawling conflict and highlight the humanity of those involved in pulse pounding battles. Following a successful Kickstarter campaign with artist Lillian, Sweeney Boo's Eat and Love Yourself is being released as an original graphic novel from Boom Studios. A story about Mindy, a woman living with an eating disorder who has to learn how to love herself again. In pursuit of the perfect body, nope. In pursuit of the perfect body, she buys low fat diet products and the glossy magazines, which promise the secret to losing weight. One night while perusing the aisles of the neighborhood convenience store for a midnight snack, she finds a new product, a chocolate bar called Eat and Love Yourself. On a whim, Mindy buys the curious candy, not knowing that with piece of chocolate she eats, she will be brought back to a specific moment in her past, helping her to look at herself honestly, learn to love her body the way it is, and accepting love. Perhaps she will even realize that her long-lost high school best friend, Elliot, was more than just a friend. Sweeney Boo presents an honest and uncompromising look at how we form our self-image, the eating disorders that haunt our most private moments, and what it takes to learn to love ourselves again. Now, this is an award-winning graphic novel autobiography of a father and the challenges he faces raising his autistic son. Little Victories by Yvonne Roy from Titan Comics. Uh, Diamond actually has this releasing in May, but currently Amazon listing puts this at a September release date. So like Betty said, things will may change. Um, a beautiful visual exploration of the highs and lows experienced by a parent learning how to adapt to his son's autism. Faced with a challenging road ahead, the author uses creative flair and ingenuity in order con to connect with his son, enabling him to reach his fullest potential and prepare him for the transition into adulthood. This stunning insight into the nature of autism and the daily struggles of a parent uses humor and compassion to convey its message. This is the perfect creative outlet for anyone from parent to teacher looking for detailed information on the subject, but with a more personal touch. And my final section is Book Buzz Gems. These are the ones that almost got away. Um, all of these titles are uh, available now on Overdrive or Hoopla. Uh, first is Go to Sleep, I Miss You by Lucy Kinsey from First Second. Frantic and fantastic follies of early parenthood are highlighted in this endearing collection of pen and ink comics. Lucy Kinsey is one of the great memorists of the graphic novel format. Following the completion of her pregnancy memoir, Kid Gloves, and the birth of her baby, Lucy embarked on a new project, documenting new motherhood in short, spontaneous little cartoons, which she posted on her Instagram, and which quickly gained her a huge cult following among other moms. The best of those wildly popular little cartoons are collected in this adorable Go to Sleep, I Miss You, a perfect read for expecting parents, new parents, and anyone who loves funny, relatable comics and storytelling. 
And from the creators of Harrow County and the Sixth Gun comes this gothic horror fantasy about a family of sorcerers in crisis. Dark Horse Books' Manor Black by Cullen Bunn. Roman Black is the moribund patriarch of a family of powerful sorcerers. As his wicked and corrupt children fight over who will take the reins of Manor Black and the representative of the Black Arts, Roman adopts a young mage who he gifts his powers to with the hope that someone good will take his place against the evil forces out to bring down his family and his legacy. Uh, and actually, sorry, I have this one checked out on Overdrive right now. Um, I will return it tomorrow. No one left to fight another Dark Horse title. Uh, what do the world's greatest heroes do when there's no one left to fight? They've saved the world countless times, growing up together and growing apart in the process. But now, with adulthood tightening its grip, they're forced to reconcile their regrets and resentments, coming to terms with the lives they've chosen. Inspired by the legendary Dragon Ball, critically acclaimed creators Aubrey Sitterson and Fico Osio invite you on an action-packed journey through their expansive new world. Fans of Hellboy, Umbrella Academy, and Black Hammer won't want to miss this exciting new vision of what genre comics can accomplish. Newsarama says basically it's the hero's journey after the destination was already reached. And finally, a look at the culture and fanaticism of book lovers from beloved New York Times illustrator Grant Snyder and Abrams Comic Arts. It's no secret, but we are judged by our bookshelves. We learn to read at an early age, and as we grow older, we shed our beloved books for new ones. But some of us surround ourselves with books. We collect them, decorate with them, are inspired by them, and treat our books as sacred objects. In this lighthearted collection of one and two page comics, writer artist Grant Snyder explores bookishness in all its forms and the love of writing and reading, building on the beloved literary comics featured on his website, Incidental Comics. Uh, last Friday, I actually went to a virtual session um, with, let me unshare here, share my screen, um, with Snyder, shared some of these comics. Stop sharing, that's the one I wanted. Um, he shared some comics and the inspirations behind them, as well as some of his personal bookcase. Uh, whatever titles you choose from our presentation today, we certainly won't judge you by your bookshelf. Thanks for listening. And if you have any graphic novel, novel title collections, please email me. Or when we've read, been to use this lovely little suggestion box here in the adult graphic novel section. And I'll let Betty take back over host duties for uh, final thoughts. Thanks. All right. So thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully we didn't talk too quickly. Um, we will be emailing. I've got an email ready to send right now to everybody with links to the presentations, um, as well as some of the bonus books that we didn't get to present. I've got the Q&A open, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave us a comment there. We do have programs, so check our regular um, website calendar and also our Facebook. Meg Scott, uh, she set up a poetry class. Um, we have a gardening club coming up, a book club, a weekly um, craft. Meg does a weekly craft. I've got an art uh, artist presenting on famous artworks as well. All right, I'm gonna stop the video now. Thank you.